Mm -hmm. All right. And who's first? Um, I think we are. I think we ask okay. questions first. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Will counsel please stipulate that in lieu of formally swearing in the witness, the reporter will instead ask the witness to acknowledge that their testimony will be true under the penalties of perjury. The counsel will not object guy? to the admissibility of the transcript based on proceeding this way, and that the witness is verified that he is in fact Bruce Whitkin. Well, what? Yes. What's wrong with his hair? Yes, I am. What's wrong with his hair? His hair's fine. Mr. Chu. Looks um, great. So agreed. And could you please state your name uh, and business address for the record, please? Bruce Wickin, California, 91607. And how did you meet Mr. Depp? Um, he joined the band that I was in in Florida. Okay. And did, did Depp ever become family? To me? Yeah. Who was the first person that Depp married? My sister-in-law, Lori Ann Allison. Yes. Okay. okay. And was that around the time? It's right when we moved out here, 1984. Okay. So how long have you known Mr. Depp? How many years? It's got to be over 40, maybe from 82 to now. Jesus. And would you consider yourself friends with Mr. Depp? Um, we were until about four years ago. Yeah. Okay. Um, and before four years ago, were you close friends? Yeah, I would consider him my best friend, yeah. Was he like a brother to you before four years ago? I mean, yeah, we were brothers. He would call me a brother, I'd call him a brother, yeah. I wonder what happened. We had a lot in common. Oh, actually, Is I... Is it fair to say that he was like family before four years ago? Yeah, I mean, he was, fr he was friends with my mom. My mom loved him. I mean, yeah, we had a... We're as close as you can get. Never happened? Maybe. And do you agree to tell the truth today, regardless of your, your close past friendship with Mr. Depp? I tell the truth either way, yes. Um, from about 2011 until 2016, how often do you think that you would, how often do you estimate that you would have communicated with Mr. Depp? A lot. We were working a lot of music together. Um, okay. We this is did interesting. a film together well he did the film i just helped record some stuff um mm -hmm. a lot a lot of time between that era but him and i spent a lot of time from around 2001 till 2015. okay you know, yeah. based on your personal observations from 2011 to 2016 What's the day of the video? Did, did mr depp ever abuse illicit drugs yeah i mean February 17th, I mean, I think 2022. Abuse is the wrong word. Three but, months ago. You know, I think that, yeah, it was, it was going on. You know, it wasn't like yeah. crazy rock and roll house. No, it was just, yeah. But I wouldn't what call it word? abuse. What word would you use instead of abuse? Getting high. <laughs> Getting high. My man. Getting high on Just getting cocaine. high. Cocaine? Yeah, well, once in a while if I saw it, you know. Yeah. I mean I've a handful of times I saw it. Oh my god. I don't god. think he liked to do it in front of me. Did you ever observe uh forgetfulness high. in Mr. Depp after he'd been drinking or using substance dose? Forgetfulness, no. I think that he's got a pretty good memory, but <laughs> You know, my personal experience with him, no. Okay. Uh, did Mr. Depp's drugs or alcohol ever impact the band uh, when you were bandmates or its music performances? We were all young. No, it was, we were kids. They we were all doing drugs. Yep. <laughs> Are you aware of, of Mr. Depp achieving any period of sob sobriety uh, during the years that you've known him? I turned it up yeah. a bit. And when was that? hard for me to I mean it was right around we'd have to look it up when he did Lone Ranger he seemed really kind of focused and wasn't drinking I went to visit him I believe it was New Mexico Amber was there everything was like different you know he was, he was proud of it he wasn't drinking and I think he was smoking a little weed but that was it and do you remember about what year that was, was pretty much nothing 
feeling it's 2013, but I'd have to look to see when Lone Ranger was. <laughs> Is there a time that you believe that Mr. Depp needed help with substance abuse? As a friend, yeah. And do you know who Dr. Kipper is? Oh, yeah. And what do you know mm -hmm. about Dr. Kipper in relation to Mr. Depp? Is that Kramer? Um, no, if it was, he'd be using N-word. I don't have a strong opinion of Dr. Kipper, but I'll be honest as I can. He was a doctor brought on, I believe, to help him get sober. Mm -hmm. He was a sober doctor. And I believe he had a nurse with Johnny and a nurse with Amber at the time. Um, I thought it was a scam. I thought it was a complete ripoff. <laughs> um, but that's just me. Please bring up exhibit no. three. Okay, and does this look like a true and accurate copy of, of this exchange? Yeah. And okay. regarding the lines, I'm real worried about him and this Dr. Kipper. Um, what did you what did you mean by that? What about the doctor? What the hell does he mean? Like I said, I didn't trust this guy. And were you ever worried about Mr. Depp's health? Um Yeah, I mean I would be, you know. I I love the guy. You know? I didn't know what he was taking, but they just both seemed like zombies. And why were you concerned? Shit. That's just because I saw how he looked and know what he's going through, and so yeah, I was concerned, but it was no couldn't get back in there to try and help. Were you nervous for him in relation to to drugs and and alcohol? Yes. So you did have some health concerns or not? Well, I, yeah. I mean, like I said, we're not as young as we used to be, and I shut up. You know, there was a part during that time that he was hitting it pretty hard, you can tell. Damn. And I just didn't want Don't to hear about that. And those concerns related to Mr. Depp's health? Yeah. And Mr. Depp's, they related to Mr. Depp's drug and alcohol use? Yes. Back to Kipper for a moment. Um, do you know if, if when Dr. Kipper prescribed drugs, you know, would Mr. Depp also take anything else besides that? For example, would, would Mr. Depp drink alcohol or use other drugs in addition to prescription drugs from 2011 to 2016? The answer would be yes. It just seemed odd to me that there was weed and um, wine and a soberness. Didn't make sense to me. Uh, and has Amber been nice to you since you've met her? Amber was always very nice to me, yes. And would you, would you consider Mr. Depp to be a romantic person? Yeah, I think so. How nice. And why do you say that? Whose witness is this? I'm assuming it's Johnny's witness. It's got to be, Just right? Just the way I've seen him act, you know. And have you noticed a certain intensity of Mr. Depp's relationships? I guess. Yes. It's Amber. And have you okay. ever observed Mr. Depp um, exhibit any jealousy when he's been in a relationship? Yes. And can you, do you remember when? I go all the way back to my sister-in-law. I mean, you can definitely have a jealous streak in him. Can you remember any specific examples? Okay, here we go. Um, Sam, yeah, I just didn't know. You know, when he was younger, he was jealous of Nick Cage or jealous of Adam Ant because my sister-in-law knew them. And was besides that um, initial time period, was did he ever Nicholas tell you Cage. about any jealousy with any Damn. other women or any other times? Yeah, Nick Cage yeah, we brought up a few yeah. with Vanessa, which were ridiculous. A lot of it was in his head and not re in reality. You know what I mean? And what about with Amber? Did did you ever? Uh, Bro, is he about to talk from JD of, of jealousy with respect to Amber? Yeah, there were a couple mentions if she was doing a movie with some guy or stuff like that. In terms of jealousy, would anything oh my make God. Mr. Depp more bother or less bother? Like I said, it would, if she was on yeah. a film or doing something oh that he couldn't be around it to 
see what was going on, I think it would he'd work himself up, you know. February 7th. Can we please bring up Exhibit 17, 6? 2022. And the very top line, if you can see that, Mr. Whitkin. Mm -hmm. Right. Your name is in the um, the participants column, and him, or Mr. Depp, is in the from column. Right. And it's dated February 4th, 2014. Amber and I um, did Mr. Depp ever tell you that he had a, a big fight with, with Amber at any time? He would mention when shit was rough, yeah. You know, they were having issues, yeah, he would mention it. Do you have any personal knowledge of, of <gasps> Bro. observing um, this Mr. guy's a straight up G. And Mr. Manson together? Yeah. Oh my God. You can't blame somebody drug Who's abuse on somebody stuff? else, but yeah, him and Manson would hit it pretty hard as well. And they, they would. Jesus. They would do. They would drink and I was, uh, smoke weed. I don't know if I ever saw Manson do blow, but I would assume that he did. Mm -hmm. He's done everything else. Okay, but you would you would see them drink together? Yeah. yeah. I Jesus. worked with them both on a few things, so. Yeah. Let's go to Exhibit Eight, please. Yeah. We can see that it's it's the same date. It's February third, two thousand fourteen. Uh, text uh -huh. exchange between you and Amber. And do you have a. I have a vague memory of him hanging at Max's <laughs> house for a couple of days. Do you know what kind of professional help more specifically? I mean, yeah, to, to kind of clean up. I mean, he tried to clean up a couple of times and he did. Yeah. That's good. I think he needed that and he needed therapy. All right. And I recommended that to him. He he did it a little bit, but then he stopped. Yeah, that's what people do. Because, um, from my experience, it's deep-rooted issues that he's dealing with. It has nothing to do with that. <laughs> that's my opinion. Um, okay. So you were referring to two types of professional health there. One was therapy, and one was cleaning up uh -huh. uh, for drugs. Is that fair? Yeah. Could we please bring up Exhibit 9? So this is okay. actually a continuation of that same date exchange from February right. uh, 3rd, 2014. Um, Manson coming on the witness stand? The yeah, that would be between, fucking good. Uh, you and Amber. Right. Do you think that you were going over there uh, out of concern? I mean, uh, obviously she was concerned, so I was concerned and, um, uh, you know, going to Manson's would have been interesting because I don't know if he would have left, <laughs> but I was trying to get there. I know I was, okay. it looks like I was trying to get through the mansion or find out where they were. Can we pull up um, Exhibit 10, please? Do you remember this exchange as sort of part of a continuation of the last exchange? Yeah, probably what I was doing is reaching out to the assistants to see where the fuck he was and how he was. Yeah. And obviously, I didn't get any real answers. Um, can I please bring up uh, Exhibit 12? It's April 28th of 2016. They cut it out. Okay. How often around, were you around Mr. Depp at this time? Jesus. In April of 2016. Probably a bit, depending on if we were rehearsing or recording. Well, my dates are a little squirrely, but. Did yeah, you probably, have any, probably a bit. Do you have any memories of, uh, at this time, of Mr. Depp getting high or drunk? Um. I mean, drinking while we were working, yeah, smoking weed. That's not. So I think your prior testimony was that you've not observed arguments between Mr. Depp and Amber. Is that correct, or or is that wrong? That's. Um, I've never seen them physically abuse each other. No. And did you say this was at three in the morning okay. when you called? It was late. I can't exactly, but it was. It was later than I imagined that I'd get a call. So I thought it was. You know, something bad, so yeah, it went down. So Stephen called at around three in the morning, uh, mm -hmm. and then you went down, and your understanding, up, yeah. you went down after that call? 
Yeah. Okay. And what was your understanding of the reason you were called? Yeah, that, it was just crazy arguing and stuff going on down there. And for some reason, he thought I could help. That's nice. What, what, what was crazy about it? Right. I mean, I think what was crazy to me is that's the first time that ever happened. You know, the first time Steven ever called me for help like that. Okay. You know, usually, usually it's just to come and record. Or Thought you could help. Yeah, sure. Or go do that, but for some reason, he wanted me to come. And when Steve had called you, did he make any references to anything being thrown around? That I don't remember. Okay, sure. It was almost like shit's going crazy down here. Can you come? Did he say that he wanted you to come urgently? Yes. How, how long did it take you to get there? My house downtown at three in the morning, maybe 20 minutes. Did you ever talk to Amber when you went over that morning? Not really. It was, oh. it was just a lot of walking around, <laughs> people going in and out of the bedroom. And, um, oh my God. I don't remember if people were crying. I don't remember any of that stuff. It was just like a yeah. burden. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, this guy's credible. You know, I don't remember talk if I talked to her. I'm sure I probably said everything to me. Oh my right. god! Like I, by the time I got there, yeah. I can, you can tell there was a vibe in the house, but Basically. there's nothing I could witness. Okay. What was the vibe in the house? Yeah, you know, just people. You know, a little bit of an edge. You know, and look, I got called down there at three in the morning, and there's the mom up. I mean, it was obviously. To me, something went down. Yeah. But I didn't see anything. Ah, that's from um, here. If we could pull up Exhibit 13, please. And do you recognize the person in this picture? Yep. Yeah. Who is it? Amber Heard. Th this picture is uh, ALH, in case you can't see the base <laughs> number, 7101. Uh, it's dated March 23rd, 2013. Okay. Um, Mr. Whitkin. You mentioned previously that you had seen bruises on Amber's upper arm. Yeah, one, it, one time, yes. One time. We Does saw that. Does this look like the bruise you saw on Amber's upper arm? Assuming it's the same Mr. one. Whitkin, um, what did they? what did the bruise yeah. that you saw on Amber look like? I mean, it looked similar to that, but it didn't look like a, it looked like a grab, not a punch. Like just somebody grabbed her arm. And do you remember what year or time frame that bruise that you saw was? All right. I'd have to go through the dates. Um, Mega grab. Working on a defensive injuries. Keith yeah. Richards documentary. And Johnny and her showed up to the studio, and I just had noticed it on her arm. Uh huh. And I, don't, I don't know if it's the same date or not. This is Amber's witness? Yeah. Did the bruise, bruise look like this bruise? It's in the same vicinity. I assumed it was Johnny's because they, they, they had known each the other. One. Can you tell me more specifics about that bruise? What did it look like? Like I said, it just looked like she was grabbed. That's all. That's what it seemed to me. What the hell is he supposed to know? Finger marks. And did you ever talk to, to Amber about, about that bruise? No. And when did you see Mr. Depp with a fat lip? Ah. Um, Late, I'm thinking it's sometime in either 2015 or 16 during rehearsal. Uh-huh. Could have been a... Lip shaming? Can you be more precise, precise of about a month? Do you think it could have been in the spring of 2015? <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember. I mean, we toured spring to summer, so yeah, maybe it's the spring of 15 or 16. I think it was 16. I think. Um, but we did, do other, we did do other rehearsals for other spot gigs, so I could be off by a year. <laughs> okay. If we could bring up it could be off. 15, please. If you look at the first text, Mr. <laughs> Wickham, um, it's from 
Mr. Well, this Dad is like says, I'm good. Just got a fucked finger. Oh, right. And the second text. I'm good. I just got a fucked finger. That's from dude. Yeah, man. And do, do, do you remember what you would have been concerned about? Just the fact that somehow his <laughs> finger got cut off and yeah. he's got doctors around him that are supposed to be making him sober and everything's supposed to be better. And it wasn't. That's actually Did Mr. Good, Depp ever um, that's a good talk point. to you about, about that, about sobering up? Yeah, that's a really good point. A little bit. He just said, you know, AA wasn't his cup of tea. Didn't believe in a higher power. He didn't believe sobering up was his cup of tea? No, he just didn't believe in a higher power. If he was going to do it, he'd do it his own way. Do you remember <laughs> any specific incidents of Amber with, with of oh. anger with Amber? I mean, he would talk about frustrations or whatever, and we would try. It feels to like talk AA it, has you like it's like related it wasn't to God. Wasn't as much anger as it was. That's much, what he means. It was like confusion and sadness, and why is this not working? You know. Um, but no, he would never. Very rarely would it be a specific reason why. And did you notice any increase or decrease in Mr. Depp's anger when he was drinking uh -huh. or on drugs? Um, I don't. Didn't know much of a acknowledging yeah, yeah, exactly. Did you ever see Mr. Depp doing drugs with uh, other bandmates? Yes. Did you ever see Mr. Depp doing drugs with Joe Perry? Yes. These, these what all... types of drugs did you see them do? Yes. They were doing cocaine. Uh, and how do you know they were doing cocaine? Because I was in the room. And around what time was that? All right. It was, it was pretty late. All right. What year? It had to be 2016 because that's when we were on the road. Have you ever seen Mr. Depp do cocaine before 2016? Yes. And when was that? Yeah, he was in the room, guys. Probably 2014 was the first time I saw him do it because I was quite surprised because when we were kids, he hated this stuff. Um, uh-huh. But then after that, when I kind of said, why are you doing this? He, he kind of hid it from me for a long time. Of until, course. I believe in 2016. Yeah. And do you have any recollection um, of steps Mr. Depp took in December 2015 to try to assist mm -hmm. in decreasing spending? I don't know all the details about it. There was obviously another lawsuit with that whole thing. Um, but I do know leading up to that time he needed to slow down on spending i heard about that yeah sure did mr depp tell you about that yeah okay what did he say time, time, time. just something about the business manager and you know i've been spending too much and I need to slow down or do more movies or whatever. Have you been involved in yeah. Mr. Depp's? Too much drugs. Any of Mr. Depp's prior lawsuits? I gotta work more to buy more of them. Um, yes, I have. <coughs> um, I was part of the first one against the uh, what it is. group. And then I was deposed in the lawsuit of, with his lawyer, um, Jake Bloom. Did you testify, do you remember testifying about drug and alcohol use in that, of, by Mr. Depp in that deposition? Yes. And what was that about? Um, I, went, I was at Johnny's house, things were going good, we were hanging out talking. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess Waldman came in and Johnny introduced me and I just remember Waldman saying, hey, nice to meet you. And um, Johnny had told Waldman that I was part of uh, Unison Music, which was named in the lawsuit. And if, uh, okay. And if, if they needed any paperwork from me, that I had all my paperwork and tax returns. Um, oh, my God. And Waldman turned right at me, looked me in the eye, and just said, you got any shit on the Mandels? And I said, no. That was it. That's the last time I saw him. And you also right. testified in the Bloom case, is that is that right? Yeah. Did you testify about uh -huh. Mr. Depp's drug and alcohol use in, in that testimony? 
Um, I believe I did. How did Mr. Depp respond to your uh, testimony? Not happy. Not happy. And what's your relationship um, with Mr. Depp now? What happened in, in the last four years? I'm curious. Honestly, I don't know. Somehow I started to feel a distance end of 2017. We had a gig um, and I saw him, but he was really kind of distant and kind of fucked up. And um, it's like he wrote me this weird text saying I stabbed him in the back and bad mouthed him and I'm like what are you talking about and he wouldn't explain it and pretty much I haven't seen him since 2018 we didn't even get to have the old bro argue just cut off can't get through to him no return text no 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 email <laughs> my daughter even got married and he ignored it so I think there's some people behind the scenes talking shit about me because everybody always tried to position themselves oh who's the best friend and who's this that when I was just there to be his friend I wonder who was doing that I think there were some lies and um, that sucks shit said about me that he actually believed which is surprising and I've yet to have the uh, conversation with him to go what are you talking about I know that he wasn't happy about my testimony but I wasn't going to lie. And um, did you ever try and help Mr. Depp? Oh, yeah, I tried. Did you ever try and help him with substance abuse? I mean, I got him with a therapist. Honestly, this just sucks. Um, like, this is just but sad. But never tried an intervention or nothing like, like that. I, that's honestly, like, this is actually just, it's so just sad. We would sad. just talk about it. And he would <laughs> say, oh, you know, I'll be all right, I'll be all right. I said, well, you know. Oh, right. Fuck, man. Then shit would just move on to the next conversation. Did you observe anyone else trying to help Mr. Depp with substance abuse? Um, I mean, I know Christy, his sister, um, was always concerned with his well-being, whether it was substance abuse that or sucks. not. Um, and everybody, I think, deep down inside was, but like I said, the people on payroll won't really say much. They'll try, but mm -hmm. what you know, they don't want to lose their job. And I'm not saying they all fall into that category, you know, but you know, it's a strange thing around people like him. Everybody wants something. And I think today you've testified to seeing a bruise, but is it He's fair like, to say yeah, that you have true. no knowledge one way or another of, of violence? Fuck, man. Not personal knowledge, no. You mentioned before that, that uh, Mr. Depp has, has pushed you away in the last four years. Is that right? Yes. Um, has, Jay, has Mr. Depp ever admitted being violent to you? No. With anyone? No. no. All right. Well, that settles it again. All right. Yes, ma'am. Your next witness. We've seen this. All right. I'm sorry. Oops. One more time. Yeah. Your Honor, we'd like to call Tracy Jacobs. Uh, she's also by deposition designation, and it begins with me. All right. Asking questions. All right, okay. That's fine. Well, friend, I feel bad for John. Like, I, it's just like this situation fucking sucks, Please man. Take your name and address for the record. But like, Tracy Renee Jacobs, Los Angeles, California. And what is your current occupation? Uh, talent agent. Okay. And how long have you been a talent agent? Thirty-four years. That's a long time. Ms. Jacobs, when did you first begin representing Mr. Depp? Uh, when I was at another agency at ICM, I think it, uh, I've, I represented him 30 years. So now since he's been gone almost five years, you can subtract 35 years. And then when I came to UTA, I believe it was 1998, he came with me. It's United Talent Agency. And I've been agency. at UTA for, well, now it's been 20, 
two years minus the last four Isn't years it? with me from the beginning. During the time that you represented Mr. Depp as his talent agent, please describe uh -huh. the types of jobs and responsibilities you performed for him. Um, I was his agent. So okay. my job, as all agents are, was to find, procure, and negotiate jobs for him, acting jobs for him initially. Well, I'm assuming if you were uh, his talent agent that you would know what his, how his career was tracking over that 30 yeah. years you were with him, would you not? He became the biggest star in the world. Damn. And Damn. Do you take any credit for that? Yes. And why? What do you what do you think your contributions were to Mr. Depp becoming the biggest star in the world? Well, A that he was extraordinarily talented and B that my talent was compatible with his in terms of understanding the kinds of roles and scripts and filmmakers that would make sense for him to work with. That's a really good insight. I like that. And able to master the two and put them together. Yeah, that's good. What is your understanding of the reason why Mr. Depp terminated you? I really don't know. All I know is he terminated essentially everyone in his life. So I was along for the ride, I guess. Line 20 said, yeah, I'm directing your attention to line 20 of Mr. Depp's deposition. As I said, bro, this is just sad. And why did you leave Tracy Jacobs in October 2016? Like, Go down. This is, yeah, this is fucking awful. And Mr. Depp's answer was Ms. Jacobs in the same attempt to corral the thievery and the injustice that was practiced upon me by Mr. Mandel and Mr. Bloom. At a certain point, Tracy Jacobs began to sort of become revealed as, I won't say co-conspirator necessarily, but she was part of that little group. And it seemed in my best interest to walk away from that relationship because her interests were quite different than when they started, when we started. She, I believe she even stated that the reason she kept me for Jesus so long Christ. was the quote was the money. She stated, otherwise, she said, I was not an easy client to represent or something to that extent. And so, yes, I had to leave the agency. Would you agree with Mr. Depp's characterization of your representation of him? Oh, I understand it. This is the first <laughs> time I'm hearing or seeing this in five years. <laughs> yeah, I understand it. Um, no, is the answer. Yeah. And, and why do you not agree with this? Because it's all untrue. Yeah. I got a lot to say about this. And then I asked him. Yeah. After asking if he sued you and he said no. Um, he did sue Mr. Mandel and, and Jake Bloom. So I thought it was. I got a lot to say about this. Uh, he, then I asked him, did Tracy Jacobs say why she did not consider you to be an easy client to represent? And he uh, answered. She certainly never, she never expressed any of those things to me. These are things that she was able, I guess, she came to the realization that I was not easy to represent after I fired her. But Ms. Jacobs, there was conflicts of interest all over the place. She had been represented by Joel Mandel. She was also to some degree represented by Jake Bloom. So therefore, there was an obvious great mm -hmm. huge conflict of interest, which I lived with for a little while and thought, no, no, this is not, no it's not a good idea. They cut the objections out. Now, yeah, my they cut question them out. to you is, do you agree <laughs> with Mr. Depp's characterization that you only expressed that he was a difficult client to work for after he fired you? Absolutely not. Do you agree that you had conflicts of interest all over the place in representing Mr. Depp as he states here. No. Do you okay. agree that you had been represented by Joel Mandel? Nope, never. Was Mr. Depp a difficult client to represent? He wasn't initially, and it became far of more course. complicated in the last 10 years of my representing him. 
and how did it become far more complicated in the last 10 years you represented me? Hmm. That's crazy. Um, that is really something, isn't it? His unprofessional behavior. Anything else? I think that covers a multitude of things. And that's going to be my next question. What do you mean by Mr. Depp's unprofessional behavior? Mm -hmm. In the last 10 years of your representation? Showing up late to set consistently on virtually every movie. Like that I was late to see his daughter? At. I never said to him, I you're a difficult client. I never used those words, but I was very honest with him and said, you've got to stop doing this. This is hurting you. Yeah. And it did. And, um, yeah. Did, even with your speaking to Mr. Depp about him consistently showing up late for set, did he correct that behavior during that last 10 years? No. Uh, and what types of difficulties did that cause for Mr. Depp? Oh, it was bad, I assume. Well, initially, Cruz loved him because he was always so great with the crew, but crews don't love sitting around for hours and hours and hours waiting for the star of the movie to show up. No. And it also got around town. I mean, people talk. It's a small community. Yeah. And it made people reluctant to use him Makes, toward the end. It's completely understandable. And totally when understandable. You say toward the end, was that toward the end of your representation of Mr. Yes. Depp? Yes. Yep. Do you recall difficulties that Mr. Depp had during Pirate 5? Yes. Did you have just one conversation with Sean Bailey or did you have more than one conversation with Sean mm -hmm. Bailey about Mr. Depp and Pirates 5? More than one, I'm sure. I don't recall. Okay. Okay. Do you have a recollection of the production of Pirates 5 uh, having to suspend for several weeks while Mr. Depp uh, had surgery on his finger. Yes. Did you go to Australia at any point during the filming of Pirates 5? Twice. Yes. Was there something that caused you to determine that that was the time you should get on a plane and fly to Australia? Yes. What do you recall that being? The complaints about what I just what I stated earlier about the lateness not showing up to talk to him about it. When you were talking earlier, I'm about mad. There being a change I'm mad. in I'm mad. Mr. Depp's behavior over the last ten years of your representation. I'm mad. Becoming more. I just I just got mad. Was part of the unprofessional behavior his increased use of alcohol and drugs? Yes was you guys part will see. of the unprofessional behavior that you witnessed increasing over the last 10 years of your representation of this Mr. Depp, his such increasing anger and tendency towards violence? No. Do you nah. know who referred Mr. Dr. Kipper to Mr. Depp? I did. Mm-hmm. And why did you refer Dr. Kipper to Mr. Depp? He has had a lot of experience with high profile people and really helping them seriously get and stay sober. Did you observe I Jack Daniels in for a second. dealings with Mr. Depp as, as <laughs> representative uh, that he romanticized the entire drug culture? Yes. I'm asking right. for your observations um, based on your dealings with Mr. Depp, was it your observation that Mr. Depp had fundamental issues with anger? Actually, yeah. Lack of, lack of and in your observation of Mr. Depp having fundamental issues with anger, did that worsen 
over the time of your representation or was it relatively the same? Yes, it worsened over time. Did you of observe Mr. Depp uh, lacking patience when he didn't get his needs met? Yes, but uh, yes. She's about Do to you say everybody does time that. While you were representing Mr. Depp, that he started having earpieces so people could feed him his lines during filming. Yes. Do you yeah. Recall that that became a regular uh, thing for Mr. Depp that he needed to use earpieces for lines being fed to him during films. Yes. Okay. Do you have a recollection of issues associated with? London Fields? Yes. I'm going to ask you to take a look at deposition exhibit number eight. Ms. Okay. Jacobs, I'm going to, I'll take you to the second page first so you can just read the frame. And there's really some part there. Okay. And then here's where I'm going to direct your attention. This is from Mr. Depp to you on Saturday, Saturday August 29, 2015. You see that? Yes. Okay. And Mr. Okay. Depp, when Mr. Depp would write to you in emails, would he regularly have parts of it all capitals and exclamation marks? Yes. Harley's. He says fucking Harley. What is he talking about? I think he's referring to. Uh, I don't know. I think he might re be referring to the daughter of a director friend of his, but I'm what not the sure. Fuck? So, do you have an understanding of what he's talking about in, with the Matthew Cullen version? Uh, Matthew Cullen was the director. I don't know about nudity, although clearly that was the case according to his understanding. And I guess he was trying to get me to kill it. God damn. Okay. And then you responded to him, I'm already on it with lawyers and Marty Singer. I've spoken to Matthew Cohen twice this AM. He also wants to stop. We are doing God damn. to shut this down. Was there another version of London? Oh, I'm sorry. I have to correct myself. He okay. made a typo here, which is why Harley, he means Hanley. They were the producers. And as you sit here today, can you recall anyone at Disney committing in any way that Johnny Depp would be in Pirate 6? No. Oh. You testified at the beginning of, of this deposition that what? while you represented Mr. As if he wasn't Depp, going to be. He was, I think, the biggest star in the world. Do you recall that testimony? Yes. And, and he wouldn't be in what it? What would you say the reputation of Johnny Depp is today? His lawsuits don't help. What do you mean by that? <laughs> She's not wrong. I mean, it's endless, but... I don't know, because I'm not out there selling him anymore. Have you ever seen Mr. Depp in, engage in angry behavior? Yes. Now, were you aware that Mr. Depp filed a lawsuit in the United Kingdom against the Sun newspapers and Dan Wooten, the editor, because they called him a wife? Yes. Good. Have you ever seen Mr. Depp hit a woman no. have you ever seen mr depp throw anything at a woman no have you ever seen mr depp kick a woman no other than amber heard do you know of any other woman who ever accused mr depp of physical abuse no have you ever seen in person any marks on amber heard no Ms. Jacobs, you testified, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that um, in the last 10 years of your representation of Mr. Depp, there was a more unprofessional behavior by Mr. Depp. Is that correct? 
Yes. During that period of time, the last 10 years you represented him, was he ever fired from a movie? No. No. Oh. Have you ever seen this document before? But they weren't going to have it on Pirate I, 6, I don't recall right? this exact document, but I know there were Never conversations been going on. Huh. What were you referring to when you said at the top of this document, Dep Exhibit 5, this is good news? That we were able to help him out when he was in financial desperation. When you say help him out, who is him? Johnny Depp. And what particularly was good news? That we were able to secure a loan for him through Bank of America when Ed White couldn't get him any money. All right, how about that? And it was very helpful to him. What was the final... Uh, deal for murder on the Orient Express. Five million dollars for four consecutive weeks, plus a great back end, which he has received significant money on subsequently. All what right, was Mr. Depp's uh, upfront compensation for Pirates Five. Yeah, he got paid twenty-five million with the back end. Would it be fair to say, my man, that you cannot say one way or the other whether Mr. Depp has hit, punched, kicked, headbutted? or choked Amber Heard? Yes. Can you say one way or the other whether Mr. Depp has ever hit, punched, kicked, headbutted, or choked anyone else? Yes. Can, Can you I say, say one, one way or the other? Do you know? No. How could she? Would it be fair to say that you were continuing to bring in good, solid work for Mr. Depp right up to the time Mr. Depp How could she? You? Correct, yes. Earlier, you said that Mr. Depp's reputation, that he became the greatest actor in the world, right? That's not what I said, but okay. I said he became the biggest movie star in the world. Movie star, thank you, forgive me. So, as of the time that greatest you were actor would be expressing Depp, preference, they can't do that as agents. It has nothing to do with her opinion on him. Do you still believe that Mr. Depp was the greatest movie star in the world? No. Why not? Because his mm -hmm. star had dimmed due to it getting harder to get him jobs, given yeah. the reputation that he had acquired due to his lateness and, and other things. And what were the other things? Just, you know, people were talking and the question was out there about his behavior and that behavior included i think i've described it several times she does that behavior include alcohol and drug use yes yes obviously mr chu asked you about i have so much vibes. to say holy fuck! can we and you indicated that you didn't believe it was released are you aware that Mr. Depp was accused of punching a local manager in the face during the filming of City Action. of Love? I read that. I don't know. Do you have any understanding of why Mr. Depp needed that loan in January of 2016? Ah. Yes. He had said he had come in and met with us and he had asked for $20 million. Okay. Did Mr. Depp tell you when he met with you why he needed $20 million? I can guess. Not specifically other than he just needed the money. I can Is guess. Is there any general discussion as to why he needed $20 million in January of 2016? Not as to why. He just expected us to do it. So he just... Yeah. So Mr. Depp came in and said, I want you to get $20 million for me? Actually, it was, I want you to give me $20 million. It ah. was not discussed. The question was not asked as a loan. He just wants $20 million. I, All right. What did you say in response? I didn't. Jeremy Zimmer and Jim Burkus spoke directly to that point. I was just... Give me $20 million. 
I'm going to hold a 20 in mil the meeting, real quick. Do you recall what Jeremy and Jim said to Mr. Depp when he asked them for $20 million? Oh yes, they said we're not in a position to give our clients that kind of money. We're not a bank. Uh-huh. Did, did Mr. Long Depp one. explain why he thought that you should just give yesterday. him $20 million as opposed to loan? Yes. What he felt that he had made a lot of money for us and that we should just do it because of how much money he had made over the duration of his being at UTA. All right. All right. Yep. There it is. Since I've been here a while, I think I need a bonus. Any other? I think I need twenty mil. That kind of a demand. No. And do you believe the Rolling Stones interview, the article, damaged Mr. Depp's reputation? Action. Yeah. Are you aware of any significant role that Mr. Depp has starred in since you were terminated that you did not negotiate and get for him? No. Did Mr. Depp get the Invisible Man? They didn't make it. They made it much lower budget with a woman, as it turns out, for Universal with Blumhouse. You were asked about whether there was any option contract for Pirate 6. Uh, and I just want to make sure I understand your answer. Did you, were you involved in any kind of negotiation with Disney God. for any kind of option contract for Pirate 6 with Mr. Depp? Not that I can recall. No. Please go on break. Please. Yes, ma'am, your next witness. Fuck. Yeah. Again, Ms. Bridhoff. Thank you. Your Honor, our, our next witness is Joel Mandel. He's also by deposition designated. Fuck. And we start the questioning. All right, thank you. Shit, I want to talk about this. Oh my God, I'm ready to go to work. What is this? It's uh, Joel Mandel. Um, that's N A N D E L. It's 8383 Wilshire Boulevard. Now, Mr. Mandel, you are here under subpoena. Is that correct? Testifying under subpoena? Correct. Okay. Could you please describe a little bit about your educational background and work experience? Uh huh. Um, down. I literally did. I uh, graduated from uh, Brown University in 1980. Uh -huh. um, I graduated from the University of California uh, Berkeley School of Law in 1983. Okay. Um, I went to work for a law firm He's a in Century City from 83 to 87. All right. Uh, called Wyman Bouts of Rothman, Kegel, and Silver. Um, and I. I left in March of 87 uh, to form this company with my brother. Oh, how about that? All Could right. Could you please describe uh, a little bit about your experience in the field of the business management, the types of clients represented, uh, your reputation in Hollywood, mm -hmm. business field? Um, I'll, I'll cut to where we are today. You uh, can ask me different questions. I mean, we're, we're a full, what I would describe as a full service business management firm, um, which means that we provide a, a wide array of uh, financial, uh, you know, administrative advisory kinds of services that we pay bills and, and, and we uh, do tax returns and we assist people with purchases of, 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 of cars and boats and art and planes. And, okay. Um, you know, we help people with outside professionals on estate planning matters, and we work with uh, brokers on house purchases and with contractors on renovations. And so it's a wide range of hell yeah, he's getting it in there. Uh, hell yeah, he's getting it in there. Primarily financial services, but financial and personal yep. services that we provide to, to, to our clients. And what types of clients are those? Um, it's usually rich people. The, the business, our business is primarily entertainment. Um, yeah. So uh, I don't have a, 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 a percentage. My, you know, my, my guess is it's probably something like 80%. Um, but that means people that work in the entertainment business, mm -hmm. broadly speaking, 
How long have you been a business manager in LA? Uh, since 1987. That's a long fucking time. When did you first That's meet a whole lot Mr. Of time. Depp? Um, in, I believe, 1999. So, if you could take us to make this a little move, run a little more smoothly, start with what you pro provided in the earlier time, and if it changed mm -hmm. over time, just kind of take me through it, if that's possible. Um, well, uh, let me do my best job. The, 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 I would describe things initially as being the way I described our services generally. I mean, the, 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 the broad range of things that we do for, for all of our folks, you know, we did for, uh, for Mr. Depp, um, you know, uh, what changed was that uh, reasonably early on, so within the first few years, his life and career um, exploded in size. And so, um, you know, as I said, our relationship started in 99. I think he did uh, the first Pirates film in 2003. And, Something like and that, so, yeah. you know, it had already his... My dad and, and I watched uh, it. It, it was, was on good. a very uh, successful trajectory. The success of the Pirates films obviously catapulted him to an entirely different level of, of, of success. Yeah. Um, and True. that was a career thing. It was also a financial thing. And so there was money made. Big from money. The Pirates movies. Mega and all money. of a sudden, the, the, you know, the, the, uh, what he was going to now make moving forward was going to be significantly greater. Mm -hmm. uh, his life changed. And so what did that translate? It? That translated into a variety of things. And, and, and I don't want to mix dates at the long Megamon. stretch of time. Um, but that meant a bigger life. It meant more employees. It meant buying additional real property. It meant buying additional personal property. Mo money. Um, Mo problems. It, it meant a bigger life and more expensive one. Yep. Um, can you please describe for me it sounds rough. the day-to-day -day logistics of communicating with Mr. Depp relating to your services? Um, sure. Uh, um, uh, uh -huh. So I'll, 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 I'll explain this, but yeah, early true. on, um, Mr. Depp had made it clear mm -hmm. that just as my initial introduction to him had been through his sister, that his sister was acting in a, what I would call a gatekeeper-like role, um, okay. and that she was going to play an instrumental part of his life in interfacing with people like me, um, like his agents, like his lawyers. Um, and so there was interface on a, on a, on a constant basis um, with Christy, in the, the role that he sort of placed her in, the, the conversations and communications were constant and daily with Mr. Depp. They were when they needed to be. And so um, we talked often, we met often, but um, not with the same kinds of frequency, you know, the daily kinds of frequency that, that I communicated with Christy. Okay. Please describe the challenges presented in serving as the business manager for Mr. Depp. I'm curious about this. All they right. changed over time. And so... Um, Has he got vodka um, behind him? Look at the, vodka the challenges box. early on were the exciting challenges of somebody whose life and career were getting you know, very big, very quickly. Vodka? And, and, and then the red cups? That's a professional challenge, but it's a lovely, wonderful professional challenge. Um... um you know, that means someone's traveling a lot. They're, again, the, you know, income and expense have, have you know, grown dramatically. It is what it is. Uh, there's more staff. There are more real properties. There's more, I mean, it just, it, 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 it exponentially grows the size of the, mm -hmm. of the job. Um, but that's what I, you know, that's what I, what I, what I do Damn for Russian? a living. So that's, um, you know, uh, all, this all, all changes place. and challenges. But, but you know. Good changes and good challenges. Um, um, my sense of the challenge of this representation and, and my description of the challenge would change probably sometime around 2010. Um, and um, 
I say that because it was the time after um, he had shot uh, the film Run Diaries, and um, uh, he had come back from that picture, and um, what had always been slightly difficult in arranging meetings became more difficult. And what okay. um, I had always experienced as um, someone who liked to enjoy his wine at the end of the day became consumption that seemed excessive. Um, okay. And the ability to coordinate and find times when he would meet became more difficult. Um, sure. And it became clear over time that there were issues with alcohol and drugs. Um, and that translated into um, more um, erratic behavior, more met Amber? stressful behavior, more times when it was difficult to. Uh, it's weird how it all lines up like conversations. That. I needed to do my job, and so um, it became it became more of a challenge um, for a variety of those reasons after 2010. And quite frankly, the other thing that happened, and this is in. 13, 14, um, you know, his meteoric sort of career rise had started to, um, uh, you know, he, there were some pictures that were not well received. Um, and, and for anybody in the business, whether you're an actor, you know, director, I mean, uh, if you're really judged by your last picture, and there were a number of pictures in a row that were not successful. And so there was a combination of yeah, events. That's um, what happens. What felt like professional pressures, what felt like some professional dissatisfactions. Yeah. Um, what I sensed was likely strains in his relationship with Amber, the use of alcohol and drugs um, made my job more challenging. You indicated that you were having yeah, more sure. difficulty. Yeah, sure. I think all that makes sense. Means. Yeah. Uh, what if any? Oh, if you want this guy, I think he, everything he's saying is fair. Drugs have on your ability to be able to arrange yeah, all this makes sense. in meetings with Mr. Depp. There were stretches of time when it it, mm -hmm. it, it appeared clear to me that the use of alcohol and drugs was a daily uh, event, and okay. and so there were obviously various times when I needed to communicate directly with Mr. Depp. Um, and so some of my conversations with the people I've described involved finding good days and good parts of days when he and I could engage in conversations that he and I needed to engage oh, in, okay. or I knew he could be clear-minded and, and so forth. All right. So on, were there any periods that you can recall between 2010 and the end of your relationship? That's why Johnny's career Depp, downfall is his own doing, uh, not related to Amber's op had any periods of sobriety there were certainly stretches of time when he seemed better there were there were days and weeks of, of there were stretches of time when he was better. yeah that's and, what the point and, is and yeah i couldn't tell you dates and but, but there were stretches of time when he was better and 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 more often not as soon as i can pop off I as will. the business manager you would have been responsible for paying mr dr kipper's uh, expenses is that correct correct uh -huh. Can you recall approximately how much per year Mr. Depp spent on Dr. Kipper and his staff? Oh, good question. Um, I, I think the fee was uh, around a hundred thousand dollars a month. Describe for me what you observed of Mr. Depp engaging. I think in I can see why I needed the twenty million behavior. What I mean um, are a variety of ways in which responses uh -huh. to things seem disproportionate to the things. Um, and so, you know, there were times when he would be upset about something and he mm -hmm. would be very, very, very upset about something. Um, seemingly to me, disproportionate to that something. Um, uh, again, erratic is a, is a, a funny word. Um, you know, I felt like things were less predictable. I felt like, it, uh, okay. you know, uh, I, I was, I guess, professionally in a place where I, where I never knew day to day what to expect. Um, yeah, sure. That makes sense. Said that Mr. Deb was sometimes, sure. uh, his responses seemed to be disproportionate and that he would be very, very upset. What, if any, observations did you make about Mr. Depp 
expressing anger. Okay. When he was angry at someone, he would let them know. Um, All right. And, and um, did that uh, was that sent in my direction? Uh, very rarely, but 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 um, at times, you know, it, 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 certainly on a handful of occasions in 2015. Um, but okay. if he was upset at a. Uh, Contractor, he would vent. If he was upset with a security person, he would vent. He Seems would, that way. Um, you know, uh, he seemed to become increasingly less filtered and increasingly uh, uh, um, uh -huh. you know, the notion of <laughs> uh, I, I want to answer you accurately. You know, people moderate their behavior. Uh, they may moderate their behavior in public because things are, uh, you know, inappropriate in a particular setting. Yeah, uh, they don't want to act like may assholes. Be upset with an employee, yeah, of but course. they're constrained in how the, the employee is chastised. Yeah. Um, my experience sure. was that um, Mr. Depp became increase increasingly less constrained, less concerned with whether he was going to upset someone's feelings, but or, 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 or just increasingly comfortable venting in an aggressive way when he was upset or disappointed about something. Okay. And did that increase over time beginning, I think you said around 2010? Um, it began to change in, 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 a, in, in, in about 2010 and it uh -huh. increased over time and and increased to the point where our relationship began to be impacted in 2015 and was eventually obviously severed in 2016. In 2016, when Mr. again. Depp would uh, express his uh, anger and upset, uh, yeah. did he use profanity? I would. Sure. That's the same thing as hitting people. Did you observe any yeah. increase in that makes sense. Mr. Depp's expressions of anger and upset uh, associated with any increase in financial difficulties or having to discuss financial difficulties? I think difficulties? that would make sense. Um, makes sense with most people. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, of course. Sure. His financial circumstances in 2015 had reached um, a, 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 a point where I was extremely concerned and had and was was uh, on a very very regular basis expressing that concern. Uh -huh. And it seemed as um, uh, I increased increased my level of, of of expressing that concern, there was anger directed in, in, in uh, you know in my direction, mm -hmm. um, and so. My warnings in 2015 that we were in very dire financial circumstances were not met very favorably. So okay. Did there come a time that you observed as Mr. Depp's business manager that his spending habits became more increased, perhaps excessive, extravagant? Yes. And when, when did you observe that? When did that begin? Um, Again, um, in the time frame I've described, like 2010 and on time frame, um, as I recall, income was very significant. <laughs> spending was the very fuck? significant. Um, and the, again, the spending levels had grown very, very, very large. Mega spending, um, yeah. And required that level of incredibly high income to be maintained. And yeah. when it dropped off, um, the disconnect became untenable. And what, if anything, did you say or do to try to mm -hmm. assist Mr. Depp in curbing that spending? Um, the, the, those conversations were constant. Uh, drop the doctor for a hundred grand a month. Kevin How about Murphy that? And Stephen Duders, part of the three hundred thousand dollars a month full time staff. Yes. Jesus. Okay. Uh, do you know roughly how much each of them were paid? It's been a long time. If I had to guess, Kevin Murphy was probably paid about a quarter of a million dollars a year, and Stephen and Nathan probably about one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a year. That's a lot. 
Do you know how much Jerry Judge was being paid by Mr. Depp as a security guard? Uh, we paid Jerry by the day. I think Jerry made something like $10,000 a day. Did All right. Mr. Depp spend any money on charities? Um, some, not very much. Okay. And approximately how much? Jerry's chilling. No, no specific recollection. Less than 50000 Um, mm -hmm. I don't recall writing large charity checks. Uh, uh, it was more his style to show up at an event or uh, sort of lend his name to something rather than write checks. Okay. Mr. Mandel, did Mr. Depp and he did that too, by the way. That he needed to change. With like his seeing people in the hospital as Jack Sparrow and shit. Like he actually did do that. Yes. Um, at, at various times when we would have these conversations, um, he would acknowledge that he understood mm -hmm. what was being communicated and would make but he expressions didn't of a commitment to sort of work with me to do what was necessary. And yeah. were there occasions that Mr. Depp would apologize and say he was going to do better? Um, th that happened on occasion, yes. Um, and what, if any, observations did you make about whether Mr. Depp ultimately did improve and mm -hmm. uh, work with you to try to get his spending under control? Um, that never seemed to happen. Uh, um, and so uh, there would be, at times, expressions of appreciation, expressions of an understanding, expressions of a willingness to do what was necessary. Um, but um, th there never seemed to be any follow through when the things would be, you know, uh, teed up that had to happen to make those, uh, you know, words real. Um, uh, there was no follow through. Okay. Now, let's talk about the tax returns for a moment. Did, did you, you and TMJ, TMJ file tax returns on Mr. Depp and his company's behalf while you were his business manager? Yes. Are you aware that Mr. Depp testified under oath that you did not file his tax returns for 17 years? Uh, I'm, I'm aware that you're telling me. Uh, Is it true that you did that you did not file his tax returns or those on behalf of his company for 17 years? No, that's not true. Um, were there times that you were unable to pay some or some or all of Mr. Depp's taxes okay. on time. What is your understanding of what or his numerous other vices meant? The use of alcohol and drugs. Do you know how much Mr. Depp spent on prescription drugs during the time that you were his business manager? There, there were periods of time uh -oh. when uh, prescription uh -oh. spending was... <laughs> from just my experience, very high, thousands of dollars a month, uh, but I can't tell you the time periods. Do you have a recollection of Thousands, whether, it's not that much, uh, comparatively. TMG had to pay, down and pay for property damage at other rental properties or hotel properties that Mr. Depp used because of damage to the property? Um, specifics, I, no, but did we pay damages at various times over the years? Absolutely, yes. And, and do you recall that Mr. Depp from okay. time to time did commit property damage in the rentals that he was in or hotels? Yeah, sure. And you recall that there were times you did have to pay for damage to Mr. Depp's rentals, is that correct, or hotels? There were times. Okay. Um, now, you had testified a little bit earlier about needing 25 million by the end of the year. Are you aware of whether Mr. Depp was able to sign on for any movies and obtain 25 million by the end of the year without the assistance of a lending entity? So uh -huh. the first time that Mr. That you, that your business, you as the business manager were unable to pay Mr. Depp's Prove the taxes furniture by October suffered domestic 15, violence. That's right. October 15, 2015. Is That's that right. Correct. And you I'll consider to that to up. be an increasing, increasingly difficult and alarming situation that we're trying to resolve 
into late January 2016. Is that correct? That's correct. I showed you earlier exhibit number eight, which was the video clip of Mr. Depp slamming doors and uh, pouring wine, et cetera, in the kitchen. Do you recall that video? I recall the video, yes. Okay. Do you have a recollection of giving Mr. Depp very bad news the morning of February 10, 2016? I don't recall a specific meeting with a specific date. Um, as I've indicated, there were a variety of meetings in groups and, and, and conversations uh, alone and, 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 in, and in groups regarding how our, you know, uh, how these very dire financial circumstances were going to be addressed. And as I've indicated, the tone of these conversations became more tense as time went on and they, these issues were not being addressed. And is it fair to say in the first half of February of 2016, the conversations that you have just described were taking place? All even more, more specifically, the... I'm back. Sorry about that. What um, happened? Mr. Depp and I began having conversations that took on a more heated turn he in July demon. of 15 when it became clear that he was not willing to sell the property in the south of France. And the tone of those conversations became more heated uh -huh. and more contentious um, as time went on uh, because the circumstances were more dire. And would it be fair to say that mm -hmm. your, your perception was that the circumstances continued to become more dire between July 2015 up through the time of your termination in March 2016? Of course. That's what makes, they did. Yeah, obviously. How did you learn of TMG's termination? Um, uh, Edward White had a colleague, an employee, a CPA, someone in his office uh, came to our office physically and hand delivered a letter. Okay. And who was the letter from? Um, I think they were hand, they hand delivered like one letter on the 15th and one on the 16th. Mm -hmm. So there was a, a letter signed by Mr. Depp indicating that our services had been terminated. And then there was a letter from Edward White's office, I recall, saying that they were the new people and, and we should coordinate a transition. Uh -huh. Did you have any familiarity with Edward White as of the, the time of the termination? Sure. Uh, I had not heard of him. Okay. And did Mr. White accept your offers of assistance? What about him hitting people? Um, for the most part, no. No. Approximately how much did Mr. Depp earn during the period of time you represented him? Oh, I'm curious about this. I recall the amount being reported to be something like $600 million dollars and um, believe that amount was probably, uh, you know, uh, close to that. All right. Still $650 million for Mr. Depp. No. Did you steal anything from Mr. Depp? No. Mr. Mandela. Oh, that was a, did, that's a demon. Oh my God. Did TMG or you take any money other than the fees that you were entitled to from Mr. Depp? No. Mr. Mandel, um, did, were you ever found adjudicated by any court, any kind of legal entity, uh -huh. any agency? Six hundred million—that's a lot of money. Malpractice, malfeasance, or embezzlement—that's big money. No. Please let me talk. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and take our morning recess. Thank at this you point. so at least much. Let's take our morning recess. Do not discuss the case and don't do any outside research. Thank today. you. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. Fucking finally, I get to talk. Again, court is still in session. If we could. Court is still in session. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. All right, we'll go ahead and take a recess then until 11.15, is that... All right, so all right. I gotta fucking talk about this shit.
Okay. Uh, number one, uh, like I, I don't even know where we're going to start. I'm actually not sure where we're going to start because I have so many different things that I want to go over and, and so many different things that I want to say. But we're going to start. Amber Heard, thanks for the five subs. I appreciate that. Um, listen, so let, let's start uh, with the obvious question here. So these are all of Amber's witnesses. Am I right? I, I think that they clearly are. They're all of Amber's witnesses. Doesn't it seem odd to you that um, all of these friends that Johnny Depp has had for multiple decades, he somehow all lost friendship with between 2010 to 2018? Like within this eight year time period. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that just a really, really interesting chain of events? How it just all happened inside of that small little time frame. And I want to tell you guys, this is what people that are crazy do. They isolate you from your friends, from people that know uh, what's, I would say, best for you. Uh, they isolate you from people who care about you and that they, they isolate you from all those people and they make sure that you're only around them. Have you guys seen this happen? Yeah, I think that's happened. It, it permeates uh, all of these different things and it's awful. And it's like also, I, I think that you talk about the talent agent, right? About how, you know, Johnny thought that she just wanted all of Johnny's money. Um, I, I wonder where Johnny got that idea. I, I wonder. I think that it's very fucking obvious. It's from Amber, right? I think so. Uh, I think she's feeding him these fucking ideas. She's telling him these things. And it's ruining his relationships. I think that's what happens. Meanwhile, she's the one that's actually a parasite. Her and her shitty fucking friends that are living on his property for fucking free are somehow not the problem. But the people who he's had a 40-year relationship with are somehow the ones that are against him. Isn't that fucking weird? And it's like, this is what happens, right? Is you're around somebody and you listen to that crazy demon for hours every single day. And then what a surprise, you start believing it. And then also, wow, um, it's like, remember whenever Johnny Depp couldn't even go in and see his own daughter? And then people were surprised that he was late to uh, uh, to one of the, the things, right? Uh, to a casting call, or not casting call, uh, to, to set. He was late to set. I wonder why he was late to set. Um, I, I think probably a combination of uh, doing drugs and also, uh, and I think that the drugs, like, oh, the drug use increases a lot in this time period. Wow, what a fucking surprise. What an absolute massive fucking surprise. Yeah, he's sitting there arguing with her. Now, is this is this really ultimately his fault? Yeah, it is. He should just tell her shut the fuck up and leave. Right? But it's a lot... I mean, you guys know, like, I've been in this situation. Like, it's a lot harder to do that. It's real easy to say, like, yeah, you should just tell, tell her to shut the fuck up and do what he wants. But, like, this is clearly not going to happen because then he's going to have to come home later and deal with this. So it's like, it, that's what it is, right? So this... It's like this woman has destroyed all aspects of his life. Um, she's destroyed his business relationships with, let's say, his talent manager, who managed him for 30 years. I mean, this is obviously not a, not a bad person. And, and like also, uh, I think to a degree, uh, you know, like he's paying a hundred thousand dollars a month for, uh, you know, medical fees, etc. I don't really know what that entails. I have no idea. That sounds absolutely fucking ridiculous. But it seems pretty obvious that, um, you know, uh, you know, she's putting. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know why that it costs that much money. I have no idea. Now they actually stole money. Uh, and, and that's also true, right? And they could have also stolen the money themselves. And this is another factor. And, and I think that, like, really, like, let me go back. Because my assumption is that she's, like, I, I think that it's probably what my honest opinion is that it's a little bit of all of the above. It's like, it's not just like his friend stealing money from him. It's not just Amber feeding him these ideas. It's not just uh, him turning to drugs in order to, uh, you know, get away from it. I think that it's very clear that it's all of the above. And also, I, I think that as well, um, it it's like the first guy that had known him for 40 years that didn't like Dr. Kipper. I, I think he brought up a good fucking point. 
How is it that, jo that, that, that he, they're, he's paying him so much fucking money, and then somehow Johnny Depp can never manage to stay sober? How does that make any sense, right? What are they doing? Like, what are, what are, yeah, what are they doing? Like, what's, what, what's happening here? It's just, he, he's getting fucked up, man. And it's like, uh, it's a toxic relationship. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's a toxic relationship. And like, what I think has happened is like, he's had so many people in his life because this is what happens whenever you get really popular, right? Uh, people act different around you. They do. And it's just, Listen, like, for me, this does not really bother me. I'm not even remotely the same level as fucking Johnny Depp, right? I mean, this is, like, a fucking massive difference. But, like, I, I you know, I've, I've gotten successful in streaming, and people have treated me different because of that, you know? And uh, Ms. Gift, oh, well, yeah, Ms. Gift has said the same thing, and, and other people have, too. This doesn't bother me as much. The reason why it doesn't bother me is that I've always been kind of an isolate person, and also I've always been a... Uh, like, I've always been, like, one of the older kids in a neighborhood. I've always had people that kind of, like, look up to me and want me to do stuff for them. So, uh, you know, like, growing up, I was, like, not really a big brother, but you could almost say that, right, to a lot of the people, like Cameron, like, you know, Cody and Jeff to a lesser extent. And, you know, I, I was a, a couple years older than them. Cameron, I was, like, four or five years older. No, I think I was, like, three or four years older than Cameron. And, and so, like, I grew up and, you know, I, I, they were like, Zach, can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? So, like, whenever somebody asked me, can you host me? I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever, right? Because, like, I've just, I've grown up like that. It's like, all right, yeah, sure, I I'll help you out, right? Because it's just, uh, it's it's nothing to me, right? It, it, it's not a big deal. And, and so, uh, irresponsible big brother, well, I would still help them out, of course. And, uh, yeah, give me money, big bro. Come on, man. Well, that's the thing, is they would do that even back then. Like, any time, I remember, whenever I sold something, one time, Jeff, this is, like, just an example. One time, I sold, like, a really, really expensive mount, right? Like, I'm talking, like, I dropped, I, I, I hit 120k on this mount, man. Like, I got big money, and this was back in Cataclysm. This was, like, over a thousand bucks worth of money back then. And, and so, I just sold this, and Jeff fucking does a calculation of how much of my total net worth uh, of like gold and like resources i would have to give him in order for him to buy a boe and he's like this is only 3.85 percent of your net worth and this could make my character this could really take me to the next level right and, and like this is what it was and so this didn't have i told him i wasn't gonna give him the money so guess what he does he goes to my mom and she gives him the fucking money and, and so this is what happens right and, and like it, it's not a big deal right i don't really care about this too much it doesn't make a difference one way or another but um uh, it happens and so uh it's especially weird whenever um you, you know i think it like changes relationships or it makes people look at you differently etc and uh it, that's the way it goes and uh, as i said it doesn't really bother me but i have a personality that uh, uh that, that that's much more uh re resistant to that and also, like, I haven't had the, the, any any level of a betrayal like this before, too. Like, I've never had something like this happen to me. Uh, I, I usually, um, I usually don't really trust people that much, right? Or I, I don't, I, I, I trust people, but I keep them at a distance, I guess. And, and so it doesn't really happen a whole lot. But anyway, um, so talking about, uh, you know what I think was really fucking weird? I want to go through some of the things that I mentioned here. Um, is that, wasn't it fucking disgusting that the lawyer brought up him being late and then right after she was talking about johnny depp being late she said isn't it true that pirate six was delayed because of johnny depp's finger and they said yeah so to like imply that the finger and that happening to him was somehow like his fault or like he caused this to happen like it, it is now like on his it's it's like now on his side of the court like what a bunch of horse shit that is yeah i wonder why yeah exactly and so i saw this happen exactly yeah gaslighting as fuck what's well, not gaslighting what it's doing is it's setting up a false premise you know what i'm saying uh, i think that's what the difference is and i think that what all of these uh these different things are doing is that they are taking different perspectives of attacking johnny's character testified against them yeah yeah of course and um uh, is there attacking different perspectives of uh of johnny depp's character and hopefully trying to get people in the jury to 
imply that there was violence, right? So like now Johnny, you know, cut off ties with somebody he knew for a long time and, you know, now there's violence or something like that. Do you see kind of what I'm saying? Uh, is that it's just fucking weird, man. They're trying to disconnect Johnny's actions from any influence Amber might have had to those actions. But what I find is very weird to that is like, like Johnny Depp didn't get dropped from Pirates of the Caribbean and Fantastic Beasts until after the article came out. It was very obvious that it was because of the article. Like, everybody knows this. Like, it, it's so obvious that it was because of the article. Like, that, that, that's, that's it. Like, there's no, like, how can you possibly say otherwise? Because even uh, her talent agent said that he had never lost a role because of this. He had never been fired because of this. There was only a case where <laughs> they ended up going with a woman and making it more lower budget with the Invisible Man. And uh, he didn't get that role. But that was, that was not because of him. That was just because of what happened. And, and so I see this a, a lot where they are, you know, painting him as a substance abuser and then basically leaving empty space to allow people to fill in the gap that the substance abuse and those actions were, uh, you know, the, the cause of him being violent. You know, they're kind of like they're begging the question of that. You, you see kind of what I'm saying? And, and yeah, that, that's how I see it. Uh, Invisible Man, that guy didn't do that. I, I, don't, I don't know. But um, anyway, it's like, it, it's just it, the financial manager saying he had trouble. Like all of these things happened like after he met Amber Heard. And it just feels like, and like him getting mad more. It's like, I can tell you like whenever I was in like a situation like this before, um, whenever whenever like i would be in a stressful situation like uh because of like a girl it would make me m more emotionally elevated it would make me react to things like out of character it, it would kind of like it would take me out of my like i guess you could say like zen state you know like usually i hear something that makes me mad and i don't care it doesn't matter to me but it, it takes me out of that out of that that position and it's very hard for me to get out of that but whenever i'm out of it i'm fucking out of it you know and i think this happens to uh to why uh, you get anxious and agitated easily well yeah i do um i and also like i, I got even more that way uh at that time uh, I, I did and, and so it's like i do get anxious i get pissed off very easily and anxious very easily but like really it, it, it's like it doesn't really affect me uh, in, until it was like that, right? And that, that's really what it is. So, like, you're on that emotionally elevated level.